I want to talk um, because today is Independence Day and I'm sure everybody around the world. I don't remember um, the last time that the 4th of July, the actual day landed on a Sunday. I, I'm not sure if I can remember the last time that was, but um, today um, or this year, rather, um, it landed on a Sunday. And so I started kind of thinking about the whole Independence Day or whatever the case may be. And as we celebrate um, our, our independence and we celebrate Independence Day, um, you got to understand that there are various forms of uh, celebrations of freedom. Right. Um, we have a lot of different uh, celebrations and festivals and and big time things of that nature. Of course, we got Independence Day, the 4th of July, which is today uh, the annual celebration of nationhood. That's what it's is known for is the celebration of nationhood. It commemorates the passage of the Declaration of Independence um, that was released by Congress um, July 4th, 1776, right? Uh, we celebrate that. Um, of course, you got uh, other celebrations. Cinco de Mayo is a celebration of freedom. Um, then we have, of course, Juneteenth, amen. Uh, this year, it was uh, uh, official. It was, it was made an official day, Juneteenth. It's a federal holiday in the United States now commemorating the emancipation of African-American slaves. It is also uh, often observed for celebrating African-American culture. You know, we had that uh, last month and some of us, you know, we just really did it big. Um, it was a day uh, of celebration for us. Um, Juneteenth National Independence Day is also called uh, Black Independence Day, Jubilee Day, Emancipation Day. And, and, and we have all of these uh, celebrations and we thank God uh, for what he's doing on these days for allowing us to celebrate freedom. But you also have to understand that many of us have our own personal independence days as well. Right. I'm talking I'm talking about um, the day when we were set free. Right. When we were set free from from sickness, uh, illnesses, drugs, addictions. Uh, disease. And in some cases, people, you know, we've been set free from various uh, countless things. Uh, speaking of which, speaking of which, um, I want to send a shout out to Auntie Tanya. I call her Auntie Tanya. Uh, She's been knowing us since back in the day. She put on Facebook yesterday, right, that she was thankful to God for, bring, for being clean for eight years. And, and I don't know if you guys really uh, saw that or if you guys, I don't even know if she's on here, but when she put that up yesterday, I was so, so grateful for what God had done in her life as it pertains to her independence, right? She, she's celebrating her own independence. And I know we don't do this often, but if you can, uh, um, uh, Tanya Ellis Simmons, I don't know if she's on here, but do me a favor. I need everybody that's online to just say, thank God for Sister Tanya. Thank God for Sister Tanya. She put that post up. And as I was studying and preparing this message today, um, she said she was grateful for being free and being clean for eight years. That's Independence Day. That's, that's something uh, um, worth giving God praise for. And so we thank God for her. Uh, um, for her independence, for her freedom. And the Bible says in John 8, 36, right? He says, if the son sets you free, you are truly free indeed. And so uh, um, the fact that she's been delivered, the fact that she's been set free and she, she's, she's, uh, she's saved, she loves the Lord and she's celebrating her independence. I think that's worth all of us as a community celebrating her. And so I just wanted, I wanted to throw that shout out. I wanted to show that, throw that shout out. But whatever, whatever, whatever the case is with you, you have a right to celebrate your independence. Everybody has their own personal independence day. You celebrate your independence, celebrate your deliverance, celebrate your freedom, uh, uh, celebrate your breakthroughs, uh, even though they have dates and they have days set aside that that's on our calendar. I need you to understand that every day is an independence day when you have Jesus. Glory to God. Independence. So let's jump into this. Jump into this. Independence. The definition for independence is this. Independence is freedom from the control, influence, support, aid, or the like of others. Right? 
It is, I'll, I'll read that again for you. It's freedom, freedom from the control, the influence, the support, aid, or the like of others, right? Independence, independence. And so when we, when we talk about independence, understand this, the goal is not just to celebrate the freedom or the independence, but the goal is to maintain and protect your independent independence, right? So the goal is just not to celebrate. It's just not to have uh, uh, barbecues and have family gatherings and all of that is great. Every time you have a victory, I believe you should celebrate. But the goal is just not to celebrate it, but the goal is to maintain and protect it, okay? And in Genesis, we have the original intent uh, concerning our freedom. I want to talk about that today. And if I had a topic, I really didn't have a topic, but I would talk uh, from a topic of maintain and protect your independence. Your independence, capital Y-O-U-R, your, maintain and protect your independence. Okay, so in order to, to really appreciate independence, you got to understand the original intent of God concerning our independence, our freedom. So if you go to Genesis uh, chapter one, verse 26, I want to give you some, some background so you'll know the, the original intentions of God. In Genesis chapter one, verse 26, in the New Living then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Watch this. They will reign over the fish of the sea, birds of the sky, the livestock, and all the wild animals on the earth and the small animal along the ground. Then go to verse 28. 28. Watch this, y'all. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply. Here's the instructions. Fill the earth and govern it. It says, fill the earth and govern it. He says, uh, ran over the fish, the birds. He reiterates the fish, the birds, the animals. But I want you to see this, this phrase that he says. He says, he blessed them to be, be fruitful and multiply. Then he says, fill the earth and govern it. Now, when he says, fill the earth and govern it, it suggests that they had the liberty, right? They had the liberty to live a life with no restraints, and no worries, but yet pleasing in his eyes. When God originally created us, he created us to have liberty to live a life with no restraints, no worries, but yet pleasing in his eyes. They had, they had freedom, right? They had the freedom to do what the Lord had called them to do. They had the liberty to name the animals. They had the liberty to have dominion. They had the liberty and freedom to, 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 to name animals what they wanted them to be, to do what was needed to be done, to make moves, to make decisions, to be happy, to have a fulfilled life. They had that freedom. Please understand that was God's original intent for us to have that freedom. Okay? You know the story. Of course, of course, of course, uh, uh, they, they messed up. They, they broke the rules and they forfeited that freedom, which caused the need for Christ to come and, and, and renew our independence, okay? So, so, so you gotta know that they had the freedom and they lost it mainly because they really didn't maintain and protect it, okay? You gotta maintain and protect your freedom. How do you do that? I'm glad you guys. How do you do that? Based on the Adam and Eve experience, I wanna give you some, some principles to consider to maintain and protect your freedom. Okay. Number one, number one, I'm jumping right into this, right? Number one, in order to avoid and protect, um, in order to maintain, I'm sorry, maintain and protect your independence. Number one, you need to avoid deception. Avoid deception. Um, let me tell you, since the beginning of time, the enemy's job has been to kill, steal, and destroy. It's right in John chapter 10, verse 10 in the A clause. It says the thief comes to kill, to steal, and destroy, period, right? Period, that, that's, his, that's his, his, his main objective, right? And if you look at this, you gotta know one of the biggest weapons uh, uh, that the enemy uses uh, is deception. To kill, to steal, and destroy, one of the biggest weapons to do that is deception. Please understand this. In Genesis chapter 3, if you read your Bible and you know this story of Adam and Eve, you'll know that the serpent showed up with the intent 
to deceive them, right? Not, not to force them, but to deceive them. Uh, the devil can't make you give up your freedom. He can only deceive you. He can only trick you. He can only uh, 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 he can only try to 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 influence you to, to give up. He uses this trick of deception to make you forfeit your own freedom. And so can I su suggest to you today for those of us who have been free, for those of us that are celebrating our personal independence, do not allow the enemy to deceive you. OK, don't allow the enemy to deceive you. Deception. The word deception means the act of deceiving. It means to be cunning, fraudulent, fake, persuasive. It, it means trickery. And so those are all all tricks and schemes of the enemy. And so, you know, once you grab your freedom and you're set free and, and, and the bondage and shackles have been loosed and you have your independence. Do not allow the enemy to deceive you. Okay? Do not allow the enemy to deceive you. That's number one. So avoid deception. Number two, avoid disobedience. Ah, this is a good one because many of us, we forfeit our own freedom because of disobedience. It's right in the story. Everybody knows the story of Adam and Eve, right? And so even in chapter three, Genesis chapter three, it talks about how uh, um, God gave them uh, 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 a requirement. And it was clear that the one thing God required from them to follow, they failed to follow the one request and it cost them their freedom. They failed to follow the one request. Don't eat from the fruit of good and knowledge. Don't even mess with that. Everything else, you got, you can do what you want. You can name it. You can claim it, all of that good stuff. But there was only one requirement that he asked of them and they failed it. Can I say this? Don't allow disobedience towards the father to cause you to forfeit your independence. Ah, glory to God. Because many of us, we forfeited, we forfeited our, our independence and our freedom in him and in life because of disobedience. Again, don't allow disobedience towards the Father to cause you to forfeit your independence. Yeah, somebody say amen in the chat. Say amen to that. Don't allow disobedience towards the Father to cause you to forfeit your independence. I got Bible. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. In the New King James Version, it says this. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. For those of us that don't think there are consequences for being disobedient, the Bible says it right here. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. You better learn how to be obedient. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, whatever instructions that he give you pertaining your life, it is in your best interest to make sure you follow the, the rules and commands and words of the Lord. I got another scripture for you. Hebrews chapter 2. Verses one and two, I need you to check this one out. It says, for the message God delivered through angels has always stood firm, right? For every violation of the law and every act of disobedience was punished, which means there are, there are, uh, uh, there are, there are punishments. There are repercussions for disobeying God. And so if you want to maintain and protect your independence, number one, you got to avoid deception. But number two, you got to avoid disobedience. It was clear. It was clear that, that they that they knew exactly what the Lord has said, what he asked them to do, what he said not to do. It was clear. But they they blank, flat out disobeyed the God, disobeyed the father. And many of us right now, uh, um, we had to we had to reestablish our freedom simply because we disobeyed God. I thank God for grace. Because even when I was disobedient, God still gave me another chance. Hallelujah. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, whole nother message. But in order to maintain and protect your independence, you have to avoid disobedience. You got it? You got it? I'm just seeing where y'all at with it. Okay, good. Good. The last thing. So not only do you avoid deception, you avoid disobedience. But number three, if you're going to maintain and protect, your independence, you got to avoid selfishness. Woo! 
Woo! Let that one sit. Avoid selfishness. This, this is important. Because if you want to protect your independence, you cannot be selfish. This independence is not a green light for you to make life all about you. Right? You, you cannot uh, 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 maintain and protect independence when it's all about you. All right? You got to have a, a mindset that it's all about God. And everything that God wants me to do and wants me to have, as long as I'm in the circumference of what he has promised me, I'm able to handle that it's not about what I want to do. Uh, Jesus said it clearly. He said, not my will, but your will be done. And so you cannot be selfish when it comes to protecting your independence. Selfish. Here's the definition for selfish. Is devoted to or carrying only for oneself. Lord have mercy. Concerned primarily with one's own interests, benefits, welfare, etc., regardless of others. Can, can, I, can I suggest to you you cannot be selfish during this season of freedom. When you're in your time of freedom, you cannot make it all about you. You got to be able to consider others. You got to be able to consider what God has called you to do. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to uh, uh, um, the calling of God and whatever God has you on, especially towards the assignments, they really have nothing to do with you. They have everything to do with God's people. And so you got to make sure that when it comes to handling or protecting the independence that God has given you, you cannot be selfish. Watch the story. Genesis chapter three, verse six, right? And so, you you know, the enemy comes, the serpent came in, in the form of a snake or whatever the case may be. And he kind of uh, starts deceiving Eve. And, and, and of course, uh, uh, um, she, she made the decision to do what she had to do. But I want you to look at how selfish this situation was. It says... Genesis chapter three, yeah, it's on the screen. Genesis chapter three, verse six, watch this. The woman was convinced, okay? She was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. She saw, okay, it's about her. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom uh, it would give her. Y'all see where we going? So she took some of the fruit and ate it. Then she gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it too. I want you to notice the key word in this scripture. She, it was all about her, right? It, it was never God's intent uh, for us to live free. Uh, but because of the, the, uh, the, it was never God's intent for us to live without freedom. But because of Adam and Eve experience, the independence we had, we lost because she was selfish. You cannot make this about you, right? It's not all about, uh, I got my freedom, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to be me. I'm doing me, boo-boo. I don't need nobody. All of that thing. Look, we got we to gotta be gone with that because at the end of the day, it's up to us to make sure that we are representing God during our free time so that we our freedom experience, I like that one. It's up to us during our freedom experience to expand and display the love of God during our, our freedom, our independence. So check this out. Recap, recap, recap. It was always God's intentions for us to live free. If you study this, the story of Adam and Eve, Genesis, uh, uh, just read Genesis chapter one, two and three, and, and it give you. Uh, the, the intentions of God as it pertains to our freedom. It, it gives us the plan of God because it was, it was always meant for us to have dominion, to have power, to name the animals, to to name to 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 uh, um, to have freedom, to eat what we want, to live the way we want. It was always God's original intention to be free and have independence in that way. But because they fail to 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 protect and maintain their independence, they lost it. He sent his son, Jesus. I love it. In John chapter 3, uh, 16 and 17, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17 is key. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved or set free. John 3, 16 and 17, New King James Version. I'm sorry, I didn't get that to you guys. That was 
uh, of the, the result of Adam and Eve forfeiting the intentions of God, which caused us to have a need for the son. And God was so gracious and he loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us, not not to condemn us, but that the world through him might be free, might be saved. And so we got to know that, that, that we have to maintain and we have to protect our independence. Three things, right? Three principles I gave you. Number one, in order to protect and maintain your independence, you got to avoid deception. Number two, you got to avoid disobedience. Number three, you got to avoid selfishness, right? Once you do those things and you maintain and you protect your independence, you can continue to have an independence day every day. Why is it? Galatians chapter five, I'll close with two scriptures. Galatians chapter five, verse one in the New Living Translation, it says it like this. It says, so Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Galatians chapter five, uh, verse one in the New Living Translation. So Christ has truly set us free. Somebody should give God praise for that, right? For Christ has truly set us free. Now, watch the instructions. Now, make sure you stay free. Maintain and protect your independence. And don't get tied up again into slavery, right? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. This is for the believer. This is for the believer. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says it like this. For the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so you got to know as long as you've been set free and you got the son, you got the father, the son, and you got Holy Spirit, you can walk in freedom. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So I need you guys to be encouraged today as you go on with this day and every day after you need to be able to maintain and protect your independence. God has delivered you. He has set you free. He has broke some chains in your life. He's released you from bondage, from sickness, from disease, from, from, from all types of things. And now that you've been free, you got to make sure that you make it your responsibility to maintain and protect your independence. So let me say to you, happy Independence Day to you. Whatever God has freed you from, it is your responsibility and your obligation to praise God for your independence. That's all I have for you this morning. Hey, clap your hands. Give me some hearts. Let's, let me know that you received this word. Make sure that you, you, you display it, that you receive that it is your responsibility to maintain and protect your independence. It's not just about the 4th of July. It's not just about uh, Juneteenth. It's just not about all of these other holidays and celebrations that we have. But but Independence Day is about your independence. So make sure that while you while you on that grill, while you at the family gathering, while you doing what you're doing on your everyday life, make sure that you are giving God honor and celebrating your independence. Hallelujah. I love you guys. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your family and make sure that you enjoy your independence.